are starting this vlog with Barkley on the lead and Porty being carried by his daddy. The water levels have kind of dropped just a little bit, but it's a beautiful frosty morning. Absolutely beautiful. I am currently en route to my acupuncture appointment after this morning's beautiful walk. It is so sunny and bright and crisp and frosty and just wonderful winteriness but on the movement to spring is what it feels like even though it's absolutely freezing. It is four degrees today. I have um, acupuncture, like I said, um, my sort of monthly ac acupuncture appointment which I'm super looking forward to. And the shed is like in full, full works at the moment, which is wonderful. I'm actually not gonna be at home all day today. I am heading down to London where my nonna lives and I am going to surprise her. Um, she's not been very well. It was supposed to be my nonna's funeral, uh, not funeral, my nonna's memorial this weekend, but she's too poorly for us to all get together. So I wasn't sure if this was going to be something that she would like, but I, I messaged my auntie and I said, look, would you think Nonna would just like me to pop down and see her? And she said, yes, she definitely would. So I am leaving the countryside and making my way down to London. Um, it's quite far, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. My uncle is also there. My uncle has been here since, um, I think, since just before we lost my nonna, he moved over from the south of France to look after my nonna basically and he has um, fully taken to the role so well but I'm gonna go and spend the day with my Italian family basically um, and just have all of the good vibes of my nonna. My nonna is literally like the best human in the world so yeah looking forward to surprising her. I've got a tub of my chutney in my bag for her and, um, but first things first, acupuncture. I have finished acupuncture and I am actually well on my way to my nonna's house. Sorry if the lighting and angle is the worst. Obviously she doesn't know I'm coming, but I am very, very excited to get there. Um, it's actually been such a good journey as well because one of the things I've been wanting to do is power through some of my like audio books. I've been listening to a really long one at the moment and this has given me the perfect opportunity to power through a little bit and the journey back as well will also be useful. I'm listening, still listening to the voice inside my head because I don't actually get a lot of time anymore where I am fully able to commit and concentrate on listening to an audio book. Anyway, this lighting is absolutely atrocious because the sun is beaming. Um, but I did just want to tell you that I'm back in like, well, sort of on the way to where I used to live. And um, it's always so bizarre whenever I come back because so much changes and yet so much stays the same. And I have so many memories of this area and I, I just barely ever come back. It's so weird, especially seeing as like my family, like my family mainly lives here. It's so interesting that I don't come back that often. And I probably should. It's a nice reminder. I have to think of all of like the the key growth moments that I had of my childhood. Like my first boyfriend, my first night out, my first kiss, my school, all of those things. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting. But anyway, I'm gonna turn off my camera now and get to my nonna's. I'm so excited. They don't know I'm coming. I've never done this before. <laughs> Is yummy. Let me dish it out first. <laughs> so, did you make this for Catcher? Yeah. You have to teach me how to, how to make that, Carlo. It's, it's, it's like bread, don't you? Yeah, but for Catcher, it's not just like bread. Yes, it is. Just need to add the yeast. Actually, brings out the flavour. Okay. I don't know if you want a bit more butter, mix them in. I just love this tablecloth, by the way. That's <laughs> from Italy. I bought it back from Italy. Bread flour. Bit of yeast. It was nice now. You could put drop of oil on top and a bit of salt. On this? Mm. Okay. 
Have you tasted this yet? No, I have some. Good morning everyone. Ali has lit the fire in the living room because it is the most frosty start. There's a candle on, there are croissants in the oven. These two are very, very excited because one of the things I did at Nonna's yesterday was I went through her photos. She's been asking me to go through them for ages. So I think Ali and I are going to sit off Porter off. These are very precious, precious cargo. Okay, mummy's going to put these out of the way now. So I went through lots of old photos when I was little and Ali and I are going to sit and go through them now. These are the very, very crispy views over the garden today. You can hear the birds singing, but it is exceptionally frosty and Oh, it just looks so beautiful. I think one of the triumphs of this garden redesign is these uh, beech trees. I honestly think I'm going to incorporate more of these into the garden design at some point because they just add the most beautiful colour in the garden at this time of year. As you can see, the shed is coming along. We've got some walls up and they've braced some of the oak as well but it's all on hold now because it's the weekend. But look at this, how beautiful. So foggy and frosty. Oh, ferocious sausage in his natural habitat. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, goodness me. Oh, important places to go and people to see as usual. Morning cuddles with all of the babies. Excuse me. They are little chances. Lumi, you're worse than the sausage dogs. No. My goodness, everyone is a croissant fiend in this house. Honestly, look at this. I can't believe that they're all sat like this. I think having them in the bedroom has really made her more... Bonded that. Bonded with them. Lumi. Either that or the croissants are too much to... to resist. Barkley's like, I don't do anything wrong. Good boy, Barkley. But yeah, that picture of Grandma, I literally, like, I just... The hat, the outfit, everything. Come on, Barty, I know you've got prime spot there, haven't you? <laughs> chance of prime chance of spot. Oh, you're not even choices. going to recognise Carlo. Really? Yeah. You're not even going to recognise him. My mum looks like a Chloe advert there. Emilio? Oh, is that Emilio? Mm. It's funny, isn't it? When Auntie Debbie brought me Crocs. Are you playing cello? Cello? Vince and Nonno. Oh. Us in Italy at Groppo. Me? No boobs! So this is the house in Italy. Mm. It doesn't look like that now. Look at that car. I know. That's cool. Me and Vince. Me in the pool at Grandma's. Wow, that car looks incredible. That was Uncle Carlo. Uncle Carlo was like, look at your garden when I used to look after it. Because I, I brought it, look at your face. <laughs> Trying to get close to the croissant so we can sneakily have a lick. <laughs> we established last night that Nonno liked to put us in things when we were babies. <laughs> so he put me in an Ikea bag. This one, look at mum and dad there. Yeah. What I didn't know was my Nonno spent an entire year and he made my mum's wedding dress. He made all the bridesmaid dresses. He made all of the groomsmen and the groom's dresses. He made my grandpa's suit, his suit, Nonna's outfit, everything. He's either a control freak or my mum is a piss taker. <laughs> yeah. Me and my pinny and my tartan dress. I thought that was very, and my hairband. <laughs> Not much has changed. 
love this. This is when Dad took me and Vince to Paradise Wildlife Park. On the yacht that they chartered for their reception on the Thames. Ah, oh, there we are, bright and fresh. I um, got back from Nonna's last night and I was so tired because I, I ended up waiting until after uh, the, rush ha the rush hour had finished and so I think I got back at nine o'clock in the end but I had the loveliest day with them. It's always kind of a bit emotional when I go there though because like I feel like their house is like a vault and so like going into my Nonna's uh, workroom and just seeing everything like still there I was like I really I actually did cry at one point when when I was telling my uncle and I was like I'm just so sad that I don't have like a piece of what he created and then one of the things that they let me know is that they actually still have a lot of fabrics and buttons and things like that left over. So I think what we're gonna do is when we have a clear out, I'm gonna take those bits and pieces and have them made. Obviously it won't be made by him, but it will be one of his fabrics um, that otherwise would have gone to waste. And I'm also gonna take his jackets and see if I can have them made into something for me as well. So. Hopefully I'll have something. Um, and then this morning, Ali and I sat on the sofa and obviously went through some of the, the photographs. If I've managed to get time, I'll pop in a little segment just before this one of me like going through the photos. But if I haven't, um, I did it on Instagram and you can basically go through my life in the chapters of the month um, on my Instagram. So I save it all to chapters there so you can kind of go through and watch everything back. It is the most beautiful, bright and sunny and frosty day today. Like, oh, it just sets my heart on fire when it's like this. I'm doing a bit of homemakey stuff today. That's kind of my general consensus at the moment. I need to go and get some soil to pot up the plants that we got from uh, the garden centre last week and then I made a big order. They've just arrived so I'll open those with you and then we're also going to go to a local framing place to have some of the artwork that um, I bought before Christmas and also the piece of um, the drawing of the animals framed. So we're going to be going and choosing that as well. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a cosy at home vlog, but I had the loveliest day yesterday. I also have an order that has arrived from H&M and as you all know, I am their biggest fan and shopping on there for me is like, oh, like a treasure trove because I honestly feel like when it comes to the high street, they have the best quality, the best fabrics and things last and last and last. Like this jumper, this is from H&M and I wear this so much because it's such a classic and it's so well made. Like this is, this is just gonna last in my wardrobe. It's oversized, it's cozy. I've got it on today, keeping me warm in the frost. So anyway, I'm gonna open up the box and um, get into it. But quickly, before we um, get cracking, I wanted to show you that my husband very kindly mounted my new rails. We got these from Jim Lawrence. They are slightly different. They're more matte in comparison to the Armac Martin handles that I have, but they still have that chocolatey feel to them rather than just plain black. Uh, I think this is their beeswax finish. So, um, and honestly, it looks so much better. I was a bit worried because I thought that the jackets would look like they're sat on top of the lower shelf. And I actually think it's quite sympathetic and just looks like they're, well, they just look so much better recessed anyway. And in terms of acoustics in here, it's made a massive difference. So very, very happy that I came home to that as well. It just feels so much nicer in here and they look like, it looks like a proper wardrobe now. I just, yeah, very, very happy. Let's get into the goods before Ali and I have to go off and do all of our bits and pieces. Uh, it is a big box, by the way, a big, big box. Oh my gosh, let's pop it on here. Now, before I get into the box, um, I wanted to let you know that if you use the app for any of your purchasing from the 26th of January to the 30th, you'll get 15% off. If you see anything you like in this particular order, then head on to the app, download it if you haven't downloaded it, but head on there and you'll get an extra 15% off. So I thought that that was a nice little saving to just mention at this point in the video. Obviously I'm working with H&M on this part um, of the video, but there should be some really lovely pieces in here. The way that I like to shop on H&M is basically I look for classic pieces 
Um, you'll know that I often get my linen shirts from there because their linen is absolutely unrivaled. Get in there early. When it comes to like the sort of spring period, get in there early because they have such brilliant pieces. But anyway, um, let's get into the box. Oh, itchy shoes. Come on. Um, there's a couple of pieces in here that I bought two sizes of just because I wanted them to fit a particular way and what I will do is I'll try them on after each segment because I think it's important that I let you know what I think also like in terms of sizing which size fit is better if there's something that I don't like about it if there's something that I do etc so first and foremost this is exactly what I mean when I say that there are so many great like classically inspired items um, that are easily dressed up using more quiet luxury pieces. Now this is something I've always done, I often buy pieces that are um, more affordable and then I use my accessories to dress them up. Obviously nowadays my accessories don't have logos on them, they used to, I used to be very garish in my logos, now not at all. And um, these are the kinds of things that you can remove the like waist belts of and add your higher end uh, belts just to really give them that sort of ready to wear feel. That's something that I really like to do and I've always liked to do that no matter what my style. I feel like it works whether you have a more edgy style, whether you have a more classic style, but this is something different. So this is sort of a modern twist on a classic white shirt, but still a timeless feel because it's more of a wrap shirt. So it's not gonna look particularly um, exciting, me holding it like this, but I think this on with a pair of sort of plain classic denim jeans, some ballet pumps um, and a beautiful bag, maybe a scarf, that's gonna be a great piece for, for springtime. I got it in a typical white shirt style, but it's got this collar, which I always find a collar just gives something, it gives it a more classical feel, I personally think. So this is an all white kind of look. Um, you could also pop some really nice blue jeans to contrast and tie in the twilly. Um, but I just love an all white look, especially in spring summer. I think it looks super crisp, super chic, and this sort of wrap shirt gives a different twist to a normal shirt, so love this. Very, very lovely. It also comes in a blue and white stripe. Personally for me, this is a beautiful, beautiful blue and white stripe. This is slightly washed. Like, can you see it's got that more faded feel to it? You can't really go wrong with um, a stripe like this. It's an element that you'll see throughout uh, suiting and things like that. So if you can find something that just generally transcends styles in that way, uh, the seasons and um, trends, I mean, you're kind of onto a win. If you look back in, in the day, there was still these more classic nautical stripes in incorporated into shirting. So it, that was one of the key things. I thought I could just stop at the white, but stripes are something that always got that um, that relevance to, to modern day. It's got that nautical feel, but also that, shoot, that suiting feel. So I got that in two sizes as well. This one with white denim, you know, the white denim uh, high-waisted mum jeans that I got from Beaufort and Blake. These will look perfect with some ballet pumps, tan accessories, the usual. I absolutely love this. I love that it's like slightly sort of, it's not as, um, peplum as I thought it was going to be. It's actually really nice and fitted, far more fitted than I thought it was going to be. And I like how streamlined that is against the mum jeans. I put it with my favourite summery jeans um, and obviously tan accessories because I just think as we move into the warmer months, um, they just warm up every outfit perfectly. This is super chic. I love this so much. It's not too low either. Again, sometimes when I get wrap uh, dress items, they can often be quite low. <laughs> Whereas this one wraps over nicely, I feel really nice and covered, which makes me very happy. Love this shirt. Very, very cute. This was a beautiful dress that I could not resist. So it's got these integrated pleats into the design. It's a beautiful ivory color, billowing sleeves, it has the tie waist for a, a more streamlined look. You can keep the, the, the tie waist yourself. Otherwise, you can add your own belt however you like, whether you like a logo on it or whether you like the more quiet luxury. Um, this is made from 100% recycled polyester and the lining is 51% recycled polyester as well. So it's more of a midi length. 
but it's got the long sleeve so you can layer up at this time of year and then as it gets to spring and it just kind of warms up slightly, you can maybe you lose the layers underneath and um, it will work for the transitional periods as well. I love this neckline too because it's got the collar but still shows a little bit, a little bit of uh, your decolletage. So I loved the, oh, I just love the colour of this. Again, it's this, this ivory, this colour that you're just going to see all the time. I love it. The ivory for me is a absolute win. This is so beautiful. And again, super easy to style up for autumn, winter, but spring, summer is my vibe with this. Warm accessories, um, matching accessories, and just super lightness. But say it gets to that time of the year where it's a little bit cooler, but still, it's like heating up a little bit. You can pop a really lovely coat over the top. So I'm just gonna grab one of my coats. So I thought this really lovely Laura Piana coat would be the perfect accessory. And if you are new around here, you will know that I am constantly pairing higher end pieces with lower end pieces to create the perfect outfit. I do not shy away from anything that is a bargain. And I also love things that are super expensive and really value the craftsmanship of certain pieces as well. So this really is the perfect transitional outfit. You could even put some warm leggings underneath that just kind of go to here if you want to be a little bit warmer. But this dress actually reminds me of like an old Joseph dress that I used to have. Super timeless, super elegant, and easy to dress up or dress down. This one I really loved the look of. So this is a mohair and wool blend jumper it's not too it's not got an itchy feel to it this is actually quite soft but with a collar underneath this and some skinny jeans i thought this would look so lovely just a very very paired back comfortable casual look but still adding that cozy layer it's got a bit, bit of a boxy feel to it as well um you could also obviously wear this without anything underneath kind of off the shoulder a little bit relaxed i loved the color of this as well it's that kind of buttery buttery Marl colour. Very, very cosy. I'm trying to be as quick as possible. I know I read it on. Oh my goodness, I love the texture of this jumper. When you come up close, you can see that it's got this like light fluff that just softens and gives it this really luxurious feel. Um, I've laid it over an oversized H&M shirt, um, which I will link down below as well. I have also added a silk scarf for warmth at this time of year whilst it's still transitioning. I'm so warm, it's fantastic. And yet, even though I've got my collar kind of out like so, it's still a very, very lovely and smart, I think, but I've kind of gone a bit disheveled. So my sleeves are rolled up, but I've got my cuffs out a little bit, just little touches of layering. And obviously I've gone for warmer accessories and um, just to contrast the whites and then this kind of mid-tone in this jumper is perfect. So really happy with this and could happily wear this all day. I love a silk scarf at the moment. I feel like silk scarves are gonna be my accessory of the coming season. Just another green swimsuit that I thought you can never have too many swimsuits, especially now I go to farmhouse more often. Um, I loved the colour of this, it's slightly darker, it's got a lovely sheen to it, and it didn't look like it had too much of a high leg. I will report back on that though, because it may have a, a high leg. So when I try this on, uh, you'll know you'll know my thoughts basically. I thought just a plain black swimsuit you can't really go wrong with as well. I just like sort of understated as much as possible, and they had more of a squared neckline, which I always find really flattering on me personally. Um, so just to have some options, so it doesn't look like I only have one swimsuit. I just like to have a few little colorways. Swimsuits, I definitely think I could size up. So I'm only gonna pop on the uh, black for you, um, but I think I'm gonna take a size up in this because if I turn around and show you my bum, it is bulging out on the other side of the camera. Um, but really incredible quality. Like this is super sucky inny. Like I feel almost like, it's almost like swimwear, but shapewear. Super lovely and flattering. Not gonna stay like this for too long because um, I feel slightly uncomfortable, but yes, this is the swimsuit if you were in the market for one. I'm definitely sizing up. Of course, I could not resist the black version of the um, collared wrap blouse as well. It's got slightly oversized sleeves, um, which is a really nice design detail as well. 
doesn't look much like this so I'll pop it on just so that you can see it as well but obviously it comes in the classic white uh, pinstripe and the black as well. I love how many tones there are in this particular look. The black contrasts with the white really beautifully. I've obviously added a twilly that ties all of the tones in as well. Um, the richness of the leathers really kind of warm everything up as I always say and this fits the dream and I love this little front swoop so it really draws the eye upwards. Super flattering. Love this. Then this was one of their cashmere pieces. So this is a wool cashmere blend. And I just loved the boxy feel of this in a beautiful butterscotch oatmeal-y colour. Slight mock neck as well, which I always find super flattering on me. And then it's got almost oversized open sleeves. Just something like this, I think. If you wear it with leggings and some nice boots, and you pop some layers underneath it, you're just cozy, but you still look like you've made an effort. Um, so really good if you're like heading to the gym or something like that, and then you can get there and change into um, a different top and put some trainers on instead of the boots. It's just super easy. And it's got a nice length, like look at that length there. It comes down almost just below the hips. I like it when it covers like my crotch area. Um, and the fact that this is a blend as well, makes it super cozy and warm. So I've kind of gone for a little bit of spring, a little bit of transitional, a little bit of summer. The only thing I don't think I managed to get was that it has a matching shirt. And I think the shirt was out of stock, but because it's that beautiful blue color, I realized that I probably wear them as is anyway. Uh, what is this one? So this is the black version of the ivory dress. This is something that I will wear um, for like work and things like that, especially at this time of year, it'll look lovely with my Le Boutin boots. Um, I could very easily throw a blazer over the shoulders but have lots of layers underneath so that I'm cozy and warm. Beautiful handbag, maybe even a hairband, depending on how adventurous I feel. Um, but the pleats just give it that structured, more tailored look, which I really like. Okay, this is the black pleated dress and this is mainly styled up how I would style it for autumn winter so I'd have cashmere base layers underneath, I would have boots, tights, everything to keep me warm. I'd probably go for a bigger bag because I always find that I um, gravitate towards bigger bags and this adds a little pop of colour. You could add a twilly onto this as well if you wanted to. Um, you could obviously swap out this belt but I probably would do that with my accessories for spring summer. I'll show you how I'd style it for spring summer as well. It's one of those dresses that's so comfortable to wear but the pleats give it structure kind of like tailoring um, but you still feel fem feminine and elegant because of the lightness of the fabric. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I like the neckline as well. Um, I really think that that's not too low for someone like me but still low enough to add a little bit of sort of elongation but also not too low that you can't get warmer layers underneath which I think is really good. Um, slight volume to the sleeves would look great with a jacket over the shoulders or um, a long line coat. Love it with the pop of colour as well because um, obviously it's an all black outfit but you could go for a black bag as well. But now I'm going to style it up for spring summer. If you are a regular on this channel you'll know a lot of things about this. First of all black is not something that I shy away from in uh, spring summer it's not always like my go-to but it definitely isn't something that I shy away from um, and the lightness of this fabric makes it super versatile for that time of year obviously the tan accessories warm it up as well but still give it that timeless vibe um, I've actually popped a navy and black twilly with the bag which I think adds a little bit of detail dresses it down a little bit it makes it feel less work where the ballet pumps for me are an essential in spring summer anyway so these pointed flats are always my go-to and I just love that it still feels super elegant super timeless um, but it's done the transition from autumn to winter perfectly. Oh yes, this I was so excited. Oh my God, the length on these. So this is their silk blend trousers in a midnight blue. <gasps> Look at that. This is just gonna be one of those things that's super comfortable, but you can pop like a, a plain white shirt over the top, go for really relaxed, perfect. Um, for just a bit more of a paired back style. That waist looks really good as well 
um, in terms of fitting me, they've got pockets. And the hem, I think the important thing is looking at the, the hem, like that is a really nicely done hem. And this shade is so beautiful. The thing that I love about H&M pieces is that you almost look at them and you don't realise that they're high street. And I always think that, that 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 causes a bit of contention in the comments, but I always like things to look like almost, what's the word? Like, I, I don't want people to know that I've shopped for high street, but really I look fantastic and it looks expensive. I just, I think that it always makes me feel a little bit more um, like I've achieved something with my outfit. And this is a prime example. The fabric itself feels amazing. Um, and I just think it's something that you're gonna be really comfortable with. Like imagine going on your holiday, wearing these on the plane, you're gonna be so comfortable, but yet still look so put together. I love that, that is like my motto. I'll put it on my headstone when I die. There is a matching shirt to the trousers. So um, I often wear items like this throughout spring, summer, sometimes even into autumn, because they're just so comfortable. It's like wearing pajamas that don't look like pajamas. I've never been able to wear that pajama trend where it's like piped pajamas, but this, this is my kind of vibe. And I could put a, a beautiful white cami or crop top underneath this, have it open, then the trousers on, slides, handbag, sunglasses, and I'm ready for you know, the French Riviera or something like that. Okay, this outfit is my happy place and these trousers fit like tracksuit bottoms. Now I've popped them on with a VB body crop top um, because that's kind of like my summer holiday vibe. Like I would probably wear a bikini under this as well, but it's kind of one of those outfits as an all rounder. You can wear it however you wish, dressed up or dressed down in my humble opinion, and it is the perfect travel outfit. Like, if you see me walking through an airport I, at this time of year, I will most likely be wearing something very similar to this with a coat over the top. Now, obviously, you can wear this done up for a bit more of a covered up feel, so maybe you're not in Saint-Tropez right now, and you want this to look a little bit more presentable and sophisticated, so you can wear it like this. My fail safe for me, because I'm petite and, um, sometimes feel like clothes can drown me. The fail safe is just to tuck it in, probably go one lower like that, have a little peep of something. But this for me is just gorgeous. Like such a vibe, beautiful quality. You can obviously team it with heels if you want something a bit more dressed up. But these tones with my little twilly works exceptionally well. This is exactly what I love about fashion at this sort of like price point. You'll know what I'm like by now. I wear the same belts, I wear the same shoes, I wear the same bags, and then I like to play around with my wardrobe a little bit more. So the, the, I, I definitely follow a certain theme when it comes to shopping, especially on the high street like this, because I need to know that my accessories that I love and adore are gonna go with them and I'm gonna be able to wear them like this. And so that I get the most wear when I'm spending like, I don't know, 500 pounds on a belt, I want to wear it. That is what I want. <laughs> and so that's what these pieces are mainly focusing on. I'll link all of them in the description box down below. Um, but remember, you get the 15% off if you use the H&M app. It's from the 26th of January to the 30th of January. So don't miss out if you wanted to pick these items up because the price point on H&M is so good. Um, but it's just a nice little bit of saving as well. And the thing that I love the most is if I find a top that goes with everything, that's really flattering, I'll buy a few of them, like maybe three, so that I've always got one clean, fresh, ironed to wear and hung in my wardrobe. I, that's really something that I find is a bit of a hack as well. So yeah, that's what I've got from there. Now I'm gonna head downstairs, I'm gonna unbox the plant that I've ordered and I'm gonna get those potted up but um, I needed to get some English ivy and bits like that to just bed out the bottoms of the planters and things. So I need to go and get some soil this afternoon and then head off to do the framing. So I'm just slowly, slowly easing myself into the prep of my home for spring. Oh, that reminds me, I actually found some really lovely pieces from H&M for home as well. I haven't ordered them just yet, but I'll link them in the description box down below if you wanted to shop H&M home as well, because they have, like the green theme is just a thing right now. So they had lots of lovely green items on there. 
Right, what you can see behind me is my big order of plants. You would have seen in my last video that I went to the garden centre. They basically didn't have anything and I always want very specific plants at this time of year. First and foremost, we have the English Ivy. Now, I prefer this one to the one that has the more, it has almost like a, a cream outline to the leaves. I like this deep, rich uh, green colour. I've then gone for, I think either, is it a Boston fern or is it a different fern? Two different types of fern, but I went for, for a lot of these little ones that I can just pot up mm. in my various pots and stick around the house. I think I've got three of the ferns and three, no, I've got four of each, four ferns and four of the mini ivy. And they're just basically to add a little bit of greenery to the side tables and places like that. I generally, at this time of year, everything gets a lot more green in my house, um, but I'll accent it with maybe some bulbs from Hello Petal, just to bring in that more floral element as we get closer to spring. I also purchased those very big ivies at the back. They are actually to go outside. We want to put ivy in the, the beds so that it grows up the apex of the house and just kind of softens this flank of the house a little bit. And um, I couldn't believe it when I saw the size of these. So we're gonna do those either side and hopefully those will grow in nicely. Now I know that there'll be people screaming at the, the TV screen saying, Lydia, the ivy will ravage the brickwork. As you can see behind me, there is a 500 year old wall that has ivy all over it um, and it's still standing. So I think that we'll be safe in this li lifetime. I think the person in the next lifetime can worry about it. Let's have a little bit of moss outside on the brickwork. Yeah, that's the only thing I haven't got yet is moss, but I think I'll be okay for now. But how good is that fern? I think it's nice, yes. To put in the back corner? Yeah, as like the seasonal piece. Obviously that yeah. will change that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just can't believe how sort of like large those ivies are. I know, I wasn't expecting like them to be that, that large and I'm so yeah. glad yeah, that they are. they're more established on the root system. Yeah. They, they want out of that pot there. Absolutely, yeah, they're yeah. Large. I'm just, I'm, I've got them out of their boxes and I've put them on the kitchen table just so they get a nice dose of sunlight yeah. today and we're gonna go and get the soil. And pro probably tomorrow I'll, I'll pot them up but I don't know for definite. Um, when I'll get the opportunity to, to do that, but we need yeah. to head out fairly imminently, don't we? Because yeah. we're running out of time. I might have a little bit of banana bread. Yeah, it's nice, it's actually really nice. And, uh, that's the word I'm looking for about staying moist. Um, tender, like a chicken a, breast. A tender cake. <laughs> and the reason why I go for um, these plants at this time of year because I always feel like this time of year is when we're almost breathing new life into our homes. We're blowing off the cob cobwebs of um, Christmas and January blues and things like that. And this is my starting point where everything gets like a little bit more green, like I said. And the thing with ferns and the thing with ivy is they're actually a really good source of oxygen in your home. A lot of pe people put them in bathrooms and things like that. I like to put them everywhere. Um, and I also mix it in with like the Bertioli uh, fern fabric and things like that. Lots of lovely fresh scents, green feeling scents around my home and it just gives it that refresh. The thing that I also love is they're potted. I love flowers, I love um, receiving flowers, it's lovely, but they don't last very long. The thing with potted plants like this, they last such a long time. So really like much better if you want to sort of keep the same decor for a long period of time. You can add in vases around them. You can add in potted bulbs, like I said, but generally if you keep things fairly similar throughout the uh, season, you can just add accents to them and it always looks lovely. So that is a little bit of a backstory of my home decor. This just looks lovely. I literally just threw this together and it already looks nice, but I'll give you a bit of a close up as well. Everything has arrived in such beautiful condition. There's like no dead leaves. It's all very green and well looked after. 
um, really lovely and lovely continuity between the ferns that's one of the things I would say about my local garden centre is they never really look very well looked after and um, these ones look very well looked after now as you can see this ivy is incredibly established this is two pots uh, right here and they are going to go into these beds and grow up the apex to almost um, continue on the beauty of this wall here and um, replicate it on our house but also soften it a little bit because there's a lot of red brick in this particular uh, area of our garden so we want to just soften it so these are going to get growing up the apex and across these uh, wings of our house and then this is the piece de resistance the big ivy I think I might order another one of these to go elsewhere in the house as well because they just look beautiful but very nice and dramatic if I was to put this in a big antique pot on the big Louis Vuitton trunk I think it's going to look very very effective which makes me very happy so um, lots of lovely naturalness coming into the home Looking forward to it. Mr. Mill and Gordon coming through with the goods. Three bags of compost on the back seat because we've got the artwork in the boot ready to go to the framing place as our next stop. So usually we'd go to um, a place in Stony Stratford to get our stuff framed. But we've been told that there's a better place uh, in Kingston, so we're heading there now. Oh, so you want something that's quite chunky? Well, it could be. It depends on what you fancy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge frame. I know. But Do you think there's like a size offset scale? I don't think so, no. Because I feel like this frame this here is a nice scale ratio to the size of the this one. drawing. Okay. I think that this is really beautiful. This will look really nice in the summer. It's got a nice light tone to it and it looks like it's got nice little discrepancies. Yeah. This is very chunky. Yeah, which means it might... The colours of this. Yeah, it is nice. I mean, there probably isn't a scale. There's a smaller one. Yeah, that might be more. Because I think the colour of it complements the... Pencil. Yeah, it's nice. What do you think? Mm. We have that red. Got a job. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think this yeah. one, I think it's distressed. It's like this. Okay. Yeah? Have to take your lead. All, all, all four of those work in the house. I really like this, yeah, this one though, for, for the equine art. I think that will look really nice. Yeah. We've gone for a beautiful kind of moss green mount for the um, first singular uh, horse print. And oh my gosh, it was so amazing because we unraveled them and literally both ladies in the, in the framing shop gasped when they saw both of the prints and I was like, oh my gosh, I, okay. I've picked some good pieces um, and it's just lovely to tick that off my list and say that they, um, they're, they're gonna be ready in two weeks, as she said, under two weeks, which is brilliant. And um, oh, one of the frames though, that, but it's um, the print that's called The Flirt is the one with the uh, white and black horse. And oh, I've just picked the most beautiful peachy off-white mount um, with a distressed, frame and every single thing that we framed we framed without glass that's one thing I've realized about artwork I don't like glass um, covering them I like the the matteness the, the realness of being able to see them I am popping my dinner in the oven in a minute I've just dropped off Ali to the pub he's gonna have a few drinks with his friend I think I might have a glass of wine and grab my book light the fire because it is the most beautiful, sparkly, icy evening outside. I actually can't put it into words. And I, I think I said it in my previous video, but I feel like I'm hibernating at the moment. I'm really just loving spending time at home with the dogs, curling up with them and having a, a really nice glass of wine whilst enjoying a book. And I'm getting through quite a lot of the like reading material that I want to get through. I'm on the last four hours of Mo Gordat's book. It's a long one. And part, just to give you sort of a bit of um, just to give you sort of a bit of an idea of where I'm at with my reading, just in case if you're like there as well, I've been reading the voice inside your head or the little voice inside your head um, by Mo Gordat. My one of my favourite books of all time. One of the things that taught me the most about happiness was his first book, Sold for Happy. I genuinely like apply that to my life more than I can ever. Like, I don't think any book has ever stuck with me, not even The Sweet Spot. Um, Soul for Happy really stuck with me. So I obviously instantly downloaded the next book. The only thing I would say with this is it's not necessarily as great for Audible, 
because there's a lot of worksheets in there. So I'll be like driving it and it will be like, you know, task, grab a load of friends and do this. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I'm in a car. <laughs> so there's quite a lot of those moments where I'm like, oh, I would really like to do this, but because of the way that I am, I'm probably not gonna be able to. I think just one of the recurring things that I keep learning about, and it's so weird because there are so many points in my life that I like, I don't know whether I've made peace with them yet. Like, there's a lot of things that kind of surge me sometimes. Like I get this surge of emotion where I feel almost like wrong or there was an injustice or something like that. But from those moments has come the best things that have ever happened to me in terms of like me learning to just like thrive in this world where before, if I think back to the way that I was before COVID, I honestly, I, I, I was like living the dream, but inside I was miserable because I didn't know how to think. It wasn't because the things that were going around, going on around me were not wonderful things and I, that I wasn't grateful for them. It was because I didn't know how to think about them and I didn't know how to think in those situations. Whereas before, I think I would be in so many situations where I'd be comparing myself to other people or I'd be wanting what somebody else had or just wanting more than I already had. And I think it's still important to have goals and aspirations, but like to make sure that those goals and aspirations are still on you like on your line of happiness not somebody else's not keeping up with somebody else not you know putting on a show or anything like that it's just genuine things that make you happy and i didn't know what those were i really didn't know what those were before covid and so i look back now and i'm like oh it's so sad that you lived for that long but it it always takes something that comes along and just tears everything to shreds and just you know the, the things that you've been most frightened of happening happen and then you've just got to look at them and you're like oh, you've, got, you've got to look at what's left afterwards you've got to look at the people that are still there and you've got to look at the the ruins and what you can salvage in the ruins and the one thing that I always think that I notice the most about God, I don't know how I've gone from framing to talking about this but it's, it's because I've been listening to these books um, but I always find in situations where there is like a difficult time there, and this is my favorite saying, there are people that show themselves and there are people that show up. And I honestly, like, I can't tell you how many people have like throughout these difficult times, you think, oh my God, I can't believe that person's done, done that to me. I can't believe this person did this. And then you get to the other side of it and you learn the lessons and you learn all the important experiences and you learn how to think and you're like, wow, I am so happy that you showed me who you are. And it's funny because we were just talking about it with the lady in, um, in the framing shop where she had just encountered a really difficult customer and we were sort of watching this thing play out. And she'd never, in, she was like, in my 24 years, I've never, this has never happened. And she was shaking when she was trying to deal with us. And we'd come there off of a recommendation. It was our first time ever going. And we were like, well, we've come here off a recommendation. So honestly, don't worry. And she was just very shaken up. And I was like, but the thing is, is next time this happens, hopefully there won't be a next time, but next time you'll know how to deal with it better. And that's literally what I've just experienced. What I literally experienced the thing that I used to be so much more afraid of, like, all of the drama and all of the, the, the publicity off of the back of my TikTok, that was what I used to live in fear of. I used to be so scared of those things. And now I know that there is literally nothing to be scared of because nothing changes. Nothing changes other than the things that you would want to change. And then these stressful times, or usually stressful times, come along and you just shed them. And I just think that it's it, the, the intrinsic heart of that is literally just how you think about the situations because i get people messaging me all the time being like ha ha this that and the other but i don't think like that so it doesn't hurt me and i'm like this is all of this time i didn't know this and all of that time before and all of those experiences and all of that time i spent scared i'm now in this place where i can literally just talk quite frankly to you about things that have happened and i'm not scared 
I can be really vulnerable with you. Like I've been today on Instagram where I've like shared pictures of like throughout my life and like some of my most fav favorite memories because I'm just not scared. I don't scare. No one can hurt you when there's nothing, when nothing hurts you. And I think that this is just, uh, sorry, I have these moments where I listen to these to these books and these books really provide me with a sense of like clarity. It's why I enjoy listening to them so much. And I love sharing the reading material that I'm listening to because I know that it's changed so much of your lives as well because we're not taught this stuff. And I find that so interesting. We're not taught these really important life lessons. And so I know I wasn't taught it and I've been really lucky to go away and have life coaching and blah, blah, blah. And so when I find these books and these things, I know that although my life is different in its intrinsic parts, really the lessons that we learn are all the same. If there's one book that you listen to, I guarantee it will change your entire thought process about everything. And I'd say listen to it because Mo's got the most amazing voice ever. Download Soul for Happy and then if you want to do more work on it, if you, if you get hooked on it, download his book that I'm listening to now, which is, um, the little voice inside your head or something like that because there's so many things that I used to do that I didn't know were like really disturbing me but just because it was normal and I feel like even this situation that has happened recently whereby you know lots of people choose to consume and, and to really like just live knowing that there's so much horrible stuff going on in the world and as long as there are times in your life when you're helping and you're doing what you can, I can't do that. I can't consume myself with it. And I have to be quite sheltered and protective over my peace. I can't watch people being hurt on TV. I can't watch horror films. I can't watch disturbing things because it really upsets me. I don't want to become desensitized to those things because then I'm desensitized to like lives and human lives and it's just all of these lessons are in these books and these things these like light bulb moments where you just think my goodness I've done this for so long because it's normal but it's not it, it's so disturbing for me and you just stop doing it and your life gets better and it's wonderful so anyway read it amazing book amazing author and just an downright or amazing person I listen to all of his audio but uh, I listen to all of his podcasts as well so yeah, just do it. <laughs> um, but yes, so I didn't manage to get home in time to pot up my plants. So I think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Um, but we did manage to get soil and bits and pieces like that as well. Um, so hopefully Annie won't be back too late. But tomorrow I'm just gonna have a wonderful day pottering and placing all of my new little bits and pieces around the house um, to get get the greenery going basically. Uh, dinner is on the go, so I'm gonna pour myself a glass of wine and probably sit on the sofa with the dogs. I think I'm gonna go and put on my new cashmere jumper from H&M uh, because I want to be cozy and comfy for the evening. So I'm gonna start off with doing that. Good morning, everyone. I must be absolutely mental, but I'm up. I've got layers of clothing on because I am going to do some potting. I would normally do this in my greenhouse with the fire on, with some classical music, but as we know, I'm not back in my greenhouse just yet. So I am going to have to do this outside. I have put many layers underneath. This is the H&M uh, Cashmere Blend Jumper. It's got this really nice boxy fit to it and it is super cozy. Also the perfect shade of like oatmeal. Looks beautiful kind of draped over the shoulders if you're wearing it with a blazer. I am not wearing it as chicly today. I am wearing it for pure, cozy comfort, which I love. And I love that it's this like higher quality fabric that just feels super soft against my skin. Um, but yes, today is gonna be a busy day. I am going to be, it's probably the worst time ever to, to consider doing any kind of potting because the ground is frozen. Luckily I bought soil yesterday, so I'm hoping it's not frozen whilst it's in the car. I'm gonna empty that into my soil bucket. Um, I'm going to pot up my ferns and ivy. I'm obviously not gonna be able to get the big ivy plants in the ground, um, so I've popped them outside on the uh, side tables of the sofas just so that they can get acclimatized and when the ground warms up, they'll go straight in. Then I am, once I've potted up all of the ferns and ivy for around the inside of the house, 
I am going to sew my sweet peas. It's my first time doing this properly, so I'm a bit nervous that I'm gonna do it wrong. It says to sew between January and March. Um, it says use a propagator. I was kind of thinking that I was just gonna cover it with cling film or something like that, and maybe put them on a windowsill or put them in the greenhouse, I haven't decided yet. The greenhouse, I could probably like shimmy them in on a side somewhere, but I worry about watering them. So I'm gonna get, get them sewn and then worry about that then. So that's the plan for the morning. It is the most beautiful, oh, even more beautiful than yesterday. And it made me realize when I was having my coffee, how much I like long for these days in the same way that I do in summer. It's sort of those, um, those days that give you that happiness again, because it can be quite wet and gray in England. So I always feel like I have something to look forward to and like hope for, and you'll know like a few weeks ago, I was like, I just want the frosty mornings back. Well, they're back and they're better than ever. It is absolutely beautiful out there. we're going to use on the console in the hallway. It's a galvanized steel one, so it looks nice and rustic. Well, <laughs> I look like a bedraggled mess, but that is the only, the only way you should look when you come back in from the garden. Um, you also get left with one of the best dewy glows you just cannot get this from makeup when you're going in and out of the cold into the warm out into the cold you just get this like this freshness to your skin i mean i am wearing uh jones road again but i have potted up my plants as you can see here um a lot of my plants were frozen like the the pots so i've not been able to do the bigger ferns just yet i'm hoping to get a warmer um day so that i can like get them out the pots because i've been like out there like Aah. water helps like pouring water on them but all of my pipes are frozen so without traipsing all of the mud into the house i've kind of had to do all that i can do um but these are the pots uh that i've managed to get done a few variations of sizes um and shapes and heights etc just to give some different differentiation i'm going to do a little spread uh and tidy up all of this because Mr. Millen Gordon is busy in the kitchen as usual. So um, these are looking gorgeous. What I've done is I've reused my pots from Hello Petal and I've also managed to reuse a lot of the moss as well. Some of them have moss, some of them don't. Um, there wasn't enough to go around basically, but it's all looking really lovely here. And I've potted up this galvanized pot here. I've added some ivy to the bottom. Uh, there was no, no moss left, up, left over for this one, but that's okay, I'm fine with that. Um, it's filling this space nicely. I kept my little pheasant feathers as well. I feel like a mix of pheasant fe feathers and things like that around the home always looks lovely. Um, we've got a few varying heights and I just pad out any pots like this with um, stuff in the bottom. I'm gonna get a candle on here, a nice big statement candle, and that'll look really lovely. And I'm just going to disperse the rest of these pieces onto the surfaces around the house. Wherever I think we need a fern, it shall live there. And then these bigger ones, I'm actually gonna put into as many antique pots as I can find. I've also popped, I'm kind of really tempted to leave these here and order some more of these trailing ivy. Like, look, I've actually unwrapped them and look at how dramatic they are. I feel like once the cushions are out, this is actually going to be very, very effective. So I think I'm gonna order some more. Even these inside would look spectacular as well. I just love the way they trail across the floor like that. Um, Ali's not, not sold, but I think when the sun is shining and all of the cushions are out, I just think they look wonderful. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to order some more of those as well. Um, I'll pop all of the links to the plants that I've used and to the pots and things that I used from Hello Petal. And I think for the most part, that is me finished for this vlog. Everything is thawing at the moment. It reached minus five last night and that is quite cold. So everything is just kind of thawing out. Just like me, I'm gonna go inside and thaw out as well. But of course, don't forget that there is 15% off on the H&M app. So if you go and download that, if you wanted to pick up this 
beautiful jumper or any of the other items that I featured, you can do so using the app. Um, I've linked everything in the description box. The birds are going wild. Goodness me, they're all on the floor having a fight. <laughs> so yeah, I'll link it all in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and who else is excited for spring? If you've got this far, let me know in the comments how excited you are for spring.